I always loved watching Terraria content on YouTube and also playing the game myself, but I actually never managed to beat it. With this video, I will change that. Not only will I defeat Moonlord for the first time, I will also craft the Zenith, which created a lot of problems, but not the way you think. My name is Kapu, and I hope you enjoy the video. My Terraria journey started as so many have before, on a green peaceful patch of grass, cutting down trees, building my home. After a few minutes, I had the basic layout finished, with some NPC housing and space for my chests and crafting area, and being happy with how far I've gotten so far, I started venturing left. Finding a crimson desert, dying for the first time. After spawning back at my house, I ventured right, getting killed almost immediately. Since that didn't work out, and I couldn't find any accessible cave entrance, I started digging my own, actually finding a few caves before dying to a falling boulder. I can't seem to go anywhere, so instead I started building a little garden for potions. Flower pots on the ground will definitely do for now, and I also built a cellar for storage. With nothing left to do, I jumped back into the mines, forgetting fall damage was a thing, and after that minor hiccup, I managed to find my first life crystal dying just shortly after to a falling boulder. Having enough of the underground already, I tried plan A again, venturing left to the end of the world in hopes of finding my first zenith component, the enchanted sword. They can spawn naturally in the world in enchanted sword shrines. These shrines sometimes show themselves with a sort of chimney that can reach all the way to the surface, but on the left side of my world, I couldn't find one. Instead, I almost drowned looting an ocean chest, but could luckily teleport back home in time. I then walked right past the jungle and stumbled upon the only living tree in my world, finding myself a finch staff. Not longer being alone, I kept going further, thinking it's a great idea to start digging through the crimson without any armor whatsoever and died, so far having no luck finding the enchanted sword. With slightly better equipment though, and now different options for caves, I went into the tundra. I found a spider cave and marked it so I could later on find it again and found my second life crystal, dying shortly after that by diving into lava. I'm sort of noticing a pattern here. I then gave the jungle a shot. I was in desperate need of armor, so I focused more on the mining part, also finding a couple of chests with accessories before I then got interrupted by my first of so many Blood Moon events this run. I reorganized my inventory and found gravitation potions in my chest. I then tried to go for the Sky Islands, finding nothing but a quick death to Harpies. Spawning back home, I started building instead. I want my spawn to look pretty if I have to see it that often, you know? Knowing that I definitely will find a Zenith component and my first good weapon in the sky, I went skydiving again. This time being lucky, finding three Sky Islands back to back. The first had the lucky horseshoe, the second a balloon, and the last one had what I was actually looking for, the Star Fury. My first zenith component. With a new main weapon and the protection of not dying to fall damage anymore, I was pretty confident going back into the mines. I actually found some ore and almost immediately blew myself up. I might not be dying from fall damage ever again, but that doesn't make me lava proof yet. Hint taken, lava hot, won't be doing that a second time. Won't be doing that a third time, so after getting past my worst enemy, being my own stupidity, I actually managed to loot a lot of stuff. I got some more accessories, potions, and a lot of ripped out eyeballs for my collection. Back home, I started building more storage, NPC housing, and more importantly, my defenses. A lava trap so cozy and safe, I had to call it the Winchester. <laughs> After that, I got myself the American, meet Jalen everybody, and went to bed. The next morning I got woken up by an invasion of goblins. Perfect, I thought. I can test out my defenses, and they do be working. And within mere seconds I extinguished an entire species. To get my mind off the mass murdering, I ventured again to the end of the world in search for the enchanted sword. Digging my way through the left side of the map, getting almost nowhere due to the horrible dungeon layout, and decided to try the right side again. Where I unfortunately didn't find what I was looking for either. I found some other stuff, like the Shimmer, and probably the last survivor of the eradicated goblins. And instead of judging me, the goblin tinkerer was more than happy to join me in my journey, so I took him home. And after about an hour of pure agony, I decided that I would rather stick glass up my dickhole than digging around in that crimson any longer. 
Back home, I treated myself to a new drip, combining my Hermes and rocket boots to the Spectre boots and my lucky horseshoe, lucky shiny red balloon and cloud in a bottle to the blue horseshoe balloon. I then decided instead of excavating the whole entire world in search for the enchanted sword, I would much rather fish for it. The only issue is that I don't have any pond near my home base. So instead of walking somewhere every time I want to try my luck fishing up a sword, I tortured myself in a way better way by building my own pond. And with only having 14 buckets, it took me 25 trips of filling and dumping water out to fill that son of a beach up. So while in the background you see me grinding, let me explain to those who may not know about this. When you fish in Terraria, there is a small chance of you getting a crate, depending on the weather, the time of day and your equipment, or in short, depending on your fishing power. Pre hard mode, you can get either a wooden, an iron, or the rarest version, a golden crate. That's the one I need. There's a 2% chance of it containing the enchanted sword. So it's basically loot boxes where you don't waste your money, but your lifetime. And by doing quick math, it could take me up to 50 crates until I get what I was looking for. After finally filling up my pump with water, I then started fishing for 20 minutes straight and only managed to get one single golden crate. Yeah, this will take a while. But there's a way to at least boost my chances, with potions and better fishing gear. So I stopped fishing, wanting to go find the angler, but instead I got interrupted by my first boss fight. The brain of Cthulhu was approaching. While panicking, I managed to drink what little buff potions I had to at least try to fight, and to my surprise, I killed the eye without any issue at all. Maybe starting the world on classic instead of expert was a mistake. But I'm still having fun and that's the only thing that counts and I can always try again on a harder difficulty. After sorting out my inventory, I went on to go find the angler, also dropping to the bottom of the ocean for coral. With those, I can craft sonar potions that tell me what is nibbling on my rod. I then finished the first fishing quest, went into the underground desert for amber, I need those for great potions, and you can get amber by siphoning desert fossils through the extractinator. And after holding my left mouse button for what seems to be an entire day, I managed to craft five crate potions. I finished another fishing quest, got rewarded with fishing potions to boost my fishing power, and with the combined power of fishing, crate, and sonar potions while sitting on the toilet, this is important and not funny because it works, 20 minutes of fishing now yielded me five golden crates. It ain't much, but it's honest work. And while taking a short break to go for another fishing quest, I got interrupted by the Blood Moon event. This time I had a plan though. We teleport back, go to the Winchester, have a nice cold pint, and wait for all this to blow over. After the event ended, I opened the five golden crates and had no luck, which was to be expected because after all, it's only a 2% chance. But in order to keep my fishing as efficient as possible, I need to sort out my potion situation. So I built a giant glass stick, edging it, filling it with my seeds, and like a gentleman, finished it off. Only to be greeted by another blood moon. Another one. Which, of course, called for my plan to go to the Winchester, grabbing a cold pint, and waiting for all of this to blow over. Immediately after the blood moon ended, I got the notification that the goblins have regrouped and were ready to throw themselves back into my lava pit again. I mean, sure, I'm getting boatloads of money for it, and after my second genocide, I bought myself the mini shark and a truckload of ammunition for it. I definitely need to try that thing out, so I decided to kill the second boss of the game, the Brain of Cthulhu. Twice. And back home, I built myself the fossil armor set to further boost my range damage. I then noticed the wandering trader was selling dynasty shingles, and since my house still didn't have a roof, I built this ugly brick on top of it and called it a day. What the fuck is this piece of shit? Being better equipped with now a fully built base, it was finally time to make some progress. Next up was the queen bee. She drops the beekeeper sword, another zenith component, and normally you want at least a small arena to fight her, but me being me... I accidentally spawned her prematurely, and while I panicked again for a bit, killing her was actually quite easy. I then went on building a small arena, also in preparation of fighting Plantera in hard mode, and summoned Queen Bee again. 
killing her a second time and acquiring the beekeeper. I put it next to my copper sword at my home base. With drops I acquired from jungle mobs and some leftover brain of Cthulhu, I crafted two more zenith components, the blade of grass and the blood butcherer, which I later need for the knight's edge. I then went fishing for crates, but got interrupted by yet again another blood moon, another one, which this time I spent fishing for some blood moon loot instead, like the advanced combat techniques and the mythical vampire frog staff. I continued fishing all through the night and managed to get five more golden crates that only contained disappointment. Getting bored, I wanted to fight. Next up is Skeletron. I prepared by building an arena fit for not only him, but also later on the lunatic cultist as well. I spent a day just building, went back home to grab some potions and then placed some torches to finish the arena. And I kid you not, I got another Blood Moon event. Another one. Couldn't care less about it though and started the fight. And beating Skeletron was, yet again, absolutely no issue. With Skeletron now dead, I had access to the dungeon. I was only interested in one thing, naming the Muramasa, and got quite unlucky. I opened 10 golden chests before finding it. I placed the Muramasa at its rightful place, and with now the only thing missing to craft the Knight's Edge is material from Hell, I went ahead and dug my Hellevator. In Hell, I then used an Obsidian Skin Potion and went to town on mining Hellstone. Crafted new gear and the volcano and then quickly grabbed the other components running to the nearest crimson altar and finally crafted the knight's edge. Back home, I reforged it to legendary. After finishing the other side of my elevator, making it four wide just like God intended, I went on for a hunt for my last accessory before hard mode. Ice gates. Digging through all of the tundra, not managing to find them, I decided to go crate fishing again. During another blood moon, by the way. Another one. I fished through the whole night and only managed to deepen my gambling addiction. I now knew the only way to get ice gates was to go fishing for frozen crates. Being lazy, I wanted to be able to travel through a pylon instead of walking, so I built a house in the tundra. And then I noticed I won't get the NPCs that like that biome way after entering hard mode making it impossible to buy the snow pylon at this point. Wasting not only my time, but now having a building that will always remind me of my own stupidity whenever I walk past it. Anyway, I started fishing, gathering two frozen crates that yielded a big pile of nothing, and shortly after, slime started to fall from the sky. And since I haven't fought King Slime yet, I might as well try out my new weapon. I killed him in 8 seconds. After reorganizing my inventory, I went straight back to crate fishing, remembered about the ice gates and walked my sorry ass over there, ending up with one golden and seven frozen crates. Hey, it's something. I need the ice gates to craft frostbark boots. That one golden crate, by the way? No luck. Having not enough space for any other NPC to move in, I decided I needed more housing, opting for the desert, since I anyway needed a desert pond for fishing quests. This time though, I came prepared, with 70 buckets. It still took me 5 trips to fill the pond completely, but it was much faster and definitely worth spending all of my iron on that, just for my own sanity. But to be honest, how sane can a person with 70 buckets be? I started building the desert house, when I got interrupted by another blood moon event. Another one. That I out of respect spent going to the Winchester, grabbing a coal pint and waiting for it all to blow over. Finishing the desert housing shortly after. With some pylons working now, I started building my last pre hard mode project, an arena to fight the mechanical bosses on. Killing King Slime for a second time in the process before being interrupted, yet again, by the Blood Moon event and that I spent in the Winchester waiting for it to blow over. And after that, I finished my Sky Arena. Now it's finally time to fight the wall of flesh and progress in the game into hard mode. After building a walkway of dirt, I learned that I can't actually sacrifice the clothier, teleported back to base to get the guide voodoo doll, and while falling back down, I fat fingered my magic mirror, teleporting me back to the surface and losing precious time on my potions. Told you, my worst damn enemy is my own stupidity. Anyways, I jumped back down again, threw the guide into the lava and started fighting the wall of flesh, defeating it again with no issue at all. And with that, the ancient spirits of light and dark have been released. Ooh. Spooky.
The wall also dropped my first hard mode weapon, the Breaker Blade, and I will use that one now for a while since my Knight's Edge is kind of underwhelming. Know your fucking place, trash. Now that I'm in hard mode, I have to actually be careful again. Everything does tons of damage and I just don't. So I went ahead breaking some Crimson Altars, blessing my world with Palladium or Calcum and Adamantite. Immediately started mining that good stuff, but got my bowels unplugged by a black recluse sending me back home. And then I noticed my desert pylon isn't working again due to it being corrupted. I tried fixing it, but died in the process. Heart mode wasn't done with me yet though. I got another welcoming gift, another blood moon, but this time with a special guest, Skeletron Prime, who interrupted the sick beat of enemies dying to the Winchester and quickly proceeded to wipe the floor with me. I wasn't mad, I was actually pretty happy about that. Finally I had a challenge, so with Skeletron Prime gone, I spent the night at the Winchester waiting of course for the Blood Moon to blow over. And afterwards I spent some time mining tunnels to secure my home, so what happened to the desert won't happen here. Doing the same for the Tundra and Jungle Housing. I bought the Hollow Pylon, died shortly after by blowing myself up and finished my Adamantite armor. Noticing that I was still in need for some gear, I went ahead and mined some more Adamantite, blowing myself back up again and finished my gear. Next up is the hunt for souls of light. I farmed in the underground tundra. I killed the first unicorn I saw and it immediately dropped a blessed apple. Being instantly blessed with a blood moon event telling me the party is over, but before going home I spotted a hollow mimic. I killed it and got the Daedalus Stormbow. Not taking any chances with my luck, I teleported back home, crafted some mechanical bosses spawn items and tried out my new weapon. I still need to fish up that damn enchanted sword, but being in hard mode now I don't get any golden crates but the titanium version. The chances don't change, sadly, the first titanium crate of course didn't contain it either, so instead of fishing I fought the first mechanical boss, the twins. And by watching countless creators being better at this game than me, I knew the easiest way to kill them, by focusing spasmatism first and then finishing off Rytonator. I had no issue at all, even having enough nighttime left to give the old skeleton prime a rematch totally demolishing him and with two mechanical bosses now dead I used the hello bars I got to craft the Excalibur, another zenith component and reforged it to legendary. I didn't have any wings so I went into the sky fighting dragons, dropping a giant feather from a harpy in the process and making myself harpy wings. And after testing out my new accessories, I farmed for Souls of Night, getting killed in the process by a golden shower, sending me straight back home, now with a new kink, what? and the materials to craft the mechanical worm. While waiting for nighttime, I went fishing again, and after hours upon hours of sitting on the toilet, definitely resulting in hemorrhoids and back issues, I finally got what I was fighting so hard for to get, the enchanted sword. As a celebration, I immediately spawned the destroyer afterwards. The fight took a while, but I was never even close to dying, and killing it rewarded me with the last material I needed to craft the true Knight's Edge. Then pirates attacked. I fought the Flying Dutchman, swiftly defeating it, and a few seconds later, the pirates themselves. At night, I spawned and killed the twins and destroyer for more hollow bars, crafted my new armor and teleported to the jungle in preparation for my next boss fight, Plantera. I farmed some live fruit that had spawned, got killed in the process once, okay, maybe twice, and found my first Plantera bulb. I then died building the arena, managed to finish it, and started the fight against Plantera, easily defeating her too. I was now on a rush. Nothing could stop me. I used the free teleport back home to craft a true Excalibur and went on to fight Plantera again. She drops another Zenith component, the Seedler, which has a 1 in 7 chance to drop. Remember this, this will be important later. I didn't get lucky this time, and with no Plantera's bulb left inside, I entered the jungle temple. Breezing through it, it was super easy, and I was overly confident to fight the next boss golem too. See, you would think a boss at the end of a trap filled temple would actually be a tough battle, but he is considered to be one of the easiest bosses and no issue at- They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine, and you're not really fine, you just can't- Instead of redeeming my honor, I rather torture myself with building a mob farm, occasionally blowing myself up before being interrupted by pirates again, killing one, two, 
three flying Dutchmen before going back to killing myself again. The map farm was coming along pretty great when I got another Blood Moon event that we spent as the tradition dictates at the Winchester waiting for it all to blow over. I then finished the map farm with a teleporter to my underground pylon next to the shimmer and some dart traps before heading back into the jungle to farm more life fruit. I stumbled across some bulbs, killing Plantera for their third and fourth time, and switched things up by manually spawning the Solar Eclipse for yet another Zenith component. The Broken Hero Sword. They dropped from Mothrons, which I got pretty quickly, making me able to craft a Terra Blade. I reforged it, this time only to Superior, before running out of money. And while farming for gold at the mob farm, I spawned Plantera for the fifth time, killing her again with still no luck in getting the Seedler. I'm getting closer and closer to the end game with only a handful of Zenith components missing, one of which is the Huntsman's Blade. This sword is dropped by the Pumpkins during the Pumpkin Moon event. For that I need to go back into the dungeon to farm for Ectoplasm and I bought some pumpkin seeds and planted them. I killed Plantera for the sixth time waiting for my pumpkins to grow and then crafted the Pumpkin Moon Medallion summoning my first ever Pumpkin Moon event. Due to it being pretty late at night already and not really knowing what I was supposed to do at that time, I only managed to get to wave 8 on my first attempt, immediately crafting another medallion, this time waking up on time and summoning it again. Reaching wave 12 without the drop that I was looking for and getting barely one wave further on my third attempt. I then noticed another bulb on the map, killing Plantera for the 7th time, getting bored though by grinding and went on to kill Queen Slime, not once, not twice, but actually 3 times in a row without any issue. I built a house at the ocean to get some creative energy out, finally cleansed my desert so the pylon is working again and then went lava fishing for the last accessories that I needed to be able to craft the Terra Spark boots. I then killed Plantera for the 8th, 9th and 10th time. Still not having any luck getting the Seedler, but now with the sudden urge to punch Salad in real life. Not letting my intrusive thoughts getting the best of me though, I got the notification that the goblins have finally reproduced enough to throw themselves back at me or more likely into my lava pit, which is fine by me because that means I get more money. And afterwards I proceeded to kill Plantera three more times, getting the total up to 13 and still not dropping the Seedler. 1 in 7 chance by the way. I then decided instead of butting heads with Salad constantly, I give Golem the beating that he deserved. This time I prepared myself though, beating him 4 times in a row to get the accessories and materials I need for new gear. On my way home, I kill Plantera again. 14. Still no luck. With Golem now dead, my world has the chance to spawn Martian probes and the possibility on getting another Zenith component by killing Martian saucers during the Martian evasion event. I got pretty lucky again, my first saucer dropped the influx waiver and I defeated the Martian invasion shortly after and was yet again one step closer to crafting the Zenith. I then killed Plantera again for three more times, still not getting the Seedler and spent the rest of my day sitting in my mob farm gathering the last turtle shell I needed to craft myself the beetle armor. With now better gear I prepped for another attempt at the pumpkin moon. I died just before I reached wave 15 but at least I got the achievement and having officially reached a part of Terraria I have never reached before. Sadly I didn't have any luck though in getting the Huntsman's Blade, so I min-maxed my accessories by reforging, crafted another medallion and tried again and this time I finally got lucky. Oh nice. With the Huntsman's Blade at its rightful place I only had 3 more swords to go. So it was time to beat the final boss, Moon Lord, and finishing the game for the first time ever. And usually this should be the part where I edit this epic montage of me killing the lunatic cultist, dying a bunch of times to the moon pillars and then ending it all with my first attempt at fighting Moon Lord. But to be quite honest with you, it wasn't that exciting, neither for me nor to look at. And this is all my fault. I cheated myself out of a balanced experience by deciding in the first minute of my playthrough to start this world in classic, instead of this hard fight, multiple tries on fighting and defeating Moon Lord, I beat him on my first try. Sure, it got kind of close, but somewhere during my times of beating him back to back, I learned that I could just face tank all of his attacks with late gear equipment without even getting close to dying. 
And even though I beat him like 15 times and got the two drops that I needed, I kind of felt like that I was missing something. Oh yeah, um, the Seedler. I, I got it by killing Plantera for the 18th time, finally being able to swing the sword of all swords, the Zenith. Now, don't get me wrong, the last thing I want you to think is that I bash everyone who is now playing Terraria on Classic. I don't, because I enjoyed every minute of it, even the 25 times where I had to get water to fill up my pond. The only issue is, I feel like that Terraria on Classic is not a balanced experience all the way through. The bosses feel very simple to beat, I never struggle with one boss whatsoever. So what I'm basically saying is, I know that I can do better and I definitely will. So with the Zenith now in hand and beating Moonward for the 16th time, I looked at all of that I accomplished during this playthrough, locked out, but promised myself and you that I will be back beating Terraria on a way harder difficulty. Thank you for watching my first video I've ever created. It took me literally over a month to record the footage and edit everything, and I put a lot of effort into it. I hope you enjoyed it, and I definitely plan on uploading way more videos in the future. And I hope I see you next time too.